Good morning. Good afternoon, family. Good evening to you. Whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, let me welcome you to the mental house with me. Your host, Khadija. You know, you know, y'all always know I'm giving analogies and I'm always saying stuff that a lot of you know, a lot of y'all even send me emails or comment on it, it uh, like, you know, what do you mean by that? You know, in terms of, um, I mean, or how could you say things like, uh, when I make the analogy about uh, going deep into the ocean and having... Uh, a lot of activity on top of the water and you have a variety of activities going on so you can I kind of look at that as life you can take your pick what um, activity you want to participate in you can take your pick on what's important to you because you have free will you know, you're not up under the same laws as a squirrel who can't go outside his nature. He's got to go gather his nuts. He's got to bury them. And he's got to wait a certain allocated, protracted period of time where he goes back to go confiscate his nuts, eat them. He can't go outside the will that the creator has assessed for him. However, we as human beings, no matter what nobody tell you, at the end of the day, I want you to understand what I'm saying, because this is real important. You have free will, okay? And so because in life, there are so much and so many activities that you can participate in, you can protest against, but all of them are happening on top of the water, right? And... If you close your eyes and use that analogy where you see people sailing, you'll see them um, water skiing. You may see them fishing. You see all kind of playing water polo, just a water beach ball, whatever, all the stuff you can think about on top of the ocean. And each one of these things can be, as you, I named them as sport, you can, easy, you can easily say poverty. You can easily say finance. You can easily say um, uh, 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 incarceration rate. You can e easily say uh, whatever noun uh, that you want to put there. It, you can use, right? Just substitute the game out and put one of those institutions in there and put them on top of the water. Now, with that being said, where your heart is, is one of the issues that you will probably go after the most. You'll probably spend more time trying to advocate for that particular area. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's a good thing. Whatever it is, whatever is important to you. But when things like this happen, it just lets me further know that as a black person, they don't have to call us niggas. Uh, the N word, I'm sorry. They don't have to call us um, names. They don't have to even beat us down like they do. Because no matter what, they got a script for us and it's written in the law. All the time. All the time. And they hide it behind, oh, this is so nice. Or I'm trying to help y'all. Or this is what's best for you, as if you don't freaking know. And I'm pissing on you all the time, but you too stupid. And you don't know you think it's raining. See, and the sad part about that type of analogy or that type of thinking in that in that narrative is that you don't give us um, the uh, even the thought process that we are monolithic and we just um, have just as many uh, diverse 
individuals and families as white people. We, you don't give us credit for being like you just lump us all together. And then we're going to say that because there are some activities that we may do that com com encompasses a large amount of us. For instance, I was looking through um, some stuff and there was an uh, article I ran into it. It said the case for banning menthol cigarettes. And it was on, actually it was on Wisconsin Public Radio. So as I began to listen to them, you know, I just went to go to the legislature and pull down some of the um, information that they had in terms of the Food and Drug Administration. Well, I want y'all to listen to this. And I want to tell me how you hear this. Because I may be jaded at 61. And y'all might be a little bit on the up. Because I want to hear how you feel. Because I know I'm not wrong. <laughs> not for me. But tell me what you think about this. And tell me, can you see the, the banana in the tailpipe? The food and drug, okay. The case for banning menthol cigarettes by Bill Martins. The Food and Drug Administration announced last week that it would move to ban menthol cigarettes and flavor cigarettes, two products that have disproportionately harmed African Americans. Our guest explains why he says the proposal is long overdue and how it would substantially lower smoking rates in uh, black communities. Okay, now, I can't believe this, because this is so blatant in y'all face, in our face, that I'm looking at this going, y'all, okay, oh, oh, really? You think some, you think we this damn stupid? Okay, so you're not banning all cigarettes. Okay, because as far as I'm concerned, ain't no cigarette good. And I'm not a smoker, y'all. I'm just telling you that I'm just, and I, and I, it ain't even that I'm even looking out for people that smoke. Because if you, I wish you quit. It'd be the best thing that you could do. Okay, and I wish I could have quit um, 10 years before I did. Okay, but the bottom line is um, smoking is a nasty habit and it's not good period. Whether you smoke menthol cigarettes or whether you smoke uh, Marlboros and them other funny kind of damn cigarettes that uh, Caucasian people smoke. Winston's or uh, Territon's. Mm, whatever else. Y'all know what I'm saying. Now here's the deal. When they ban these cigarettes and they become criminal. Who smoke menthol cigarettes? So this is just one more activity that's sitting up there on the water that is built in racism. So you get they get you they get us coming and they get us going. Ain't no way in the world to be. so that's why I say the whole system got to come damn down because they think they slick with this little shit right here. Okay, because as far as I'm concerned, this is just another way to incriminate crim uh, criminalize uh, us. Cool cigarettes, Newport cigarettes, Salem, uh, 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 Benson and Hedges, um, just name them. Bel Air. Those are the cigarettes that black people smoke. When I smoked, I smoked Newports. Most black people smoke Newports, Cools. Okay, really. So that's what it's come to. Now, what concerns me about this particular case for banning menthol cigarettes, not that I'm such an advocate that people should be smoking. Um, I, I don't feel that nobody should be smoking. I feel that just by banning menthol cigarettes, you are certainly targeting African-Americans, but not in a, a way that you say that you want to help them like you always do. They go into places, these elite, and tell them that they want to help you. But when they end up damn near 
um, making you a crime, hurting you, um, exposing you, to injecting you, all these type of things in the name of we're trying to help you. This right here to me seems like just another covert way of doing something. Another covert way of doing something like that under the auspices of, oh, we're trying to help you. We're going to take away all the um, uh, 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 flavored cigarettes and we're going to, um, um, well, flavored cigars and we're going to lump menthol cigarettes up in there with them. Okay. Um, I can see them saying they got a bad, uh, if they want to ban flavored bunts or something to that effect or whatever. It said was that, how the hell did you get from that? And not all cigarettes, but just menthol cigarettes because you're trying to save the African-American community. Now, I just don't think this is going to be what this is about. I think it's going to be end up being something even more sinister and reprehensible. Because that's the history and the nature of these people that are in charge of us. Okay? So, I had to put that out there. And I, I want to know what y'all think. Please uh, leave your comment below. Don't, you know, I want to know whether you smoke or whether you're not a smoker. I mean, really, it's, you know, I want to know. Because like I said, I don't smoke. 20 years ago, I was a smoker. I'm not a smoker today. But I do have a thought process for somebody that doesn't do what I do um, or that I don't do what they do. And I'm, my whole thing is, is it some kind of racism in it? Some kind of injustice in it? Because I don't have a problem with them banning all cigarettes. None of them. None of those ones I named. But don't just do the cigarettes that black people work uh, smoke because you saying you're trying to help them. Uh, they smoking, they smoking. They and they grown, they have the right to do whatever they want to do without you imposing that bullshit on them. Okay. I done ran it enough. I'll see you in the next video.